Space ninjas, Jawas, porch pirates, third grade teachers. We've all had trouble with them stealing things from our front porch, but what can we do to protect our packages? We built a porch package box. Now no one can steal our things. But that box gives us a new problem. In order to see if we've got packages, now we've got to go all the way outside and look inside the box. That's three feet. That's exhausting. No worries, for we have the solution to that problem with this electronic panel of me and my family. What, you don't see how this can be the solution to this problem that you've given to me? Ah, oh, package is arrived. It tells you by being scary. Hello my friends, I'm going to tell you about the functionality of this thing because there's a lot going on that is not immediately apparent. Now, obviously you can see that mine and my family's eyes light up. Now, I had to like poke little holes in all of the eyes so that you could see the LEDs. What we did not think about was that the, uh, the LEDs that we're using are wider than the holes that I've cut. So it just makes like this really like creepy, like very intense eye look. and. It grabs your attention, which is good. Now, hidden behind here, there is an Arduino microcontroller that is controlling these, and it is controlling this LCD panel screen. Um, the eyes will all blink at different intervals to kind of like cast your attention, like, hey, you've got a package, you need to pick it up right now. Now, there's also a time circuit that lets you know how long the package has been there. Now right now, mine is saying a minute and 30 seconds. There's not actually a package outside. I just activated the sensors so that you could see what this looks like. Uh, but in the case that there is a package and you say, oh, let me go grab my package. You hold this yellow button for about one second and it resets it. Everything turns off and all of a sudden, wow, it's a regular picture frame again. Uh, I have it kind of wired down here so I can just play with it. But this is to simulate what happens when a package arrives. You hear a little beep. That's the, that announces the presence of a package. The lights turn on. The timer starts. There's a little message that tells you that like your package is here. It's amazing. This is the whole thing. I hope you like it. The box is made out of cheap lumber, mostly two by fours. When the lid is lifted, a platform rises to take the packages. This keeps people from reaching inside. Packages are recovered through a lockable side door that's large enough to handle the largest packages that you could possibly put in the package delivery box. This brave project began with a poorly organized family photo shoot. Turns out it's difficult to stack five full-grown adults in a doorway Scooby-Doo style. But we figured it out eventually. The end result is definitely worthy to be on the wall. After picking up the photo from our local pharmacy, I cut it down to be even slimmer because our picture is pretty skinny and we needed it to be the most skinny. Have you ever seen the Powerpuff Girls when you have like that one character with like the red outfit where you just like never saw her face? That's what I am right now. But actually I'm about to stab out uh, the eyes of me and my family on this photo, which is just kind of strange, but it's what we're doing. I guess let's stab out the eyes of my family. 10 seconds later. Oh, I messed up the whole picture. Time to start over. I'm going to gouge out the eyes, but just a little bit, not like the whole eyes. I'm gonna poke teeny tiny holes into the eyes. What I'm gonna do is I'm going to put the points for the holes on here, just on this piece of wood. And then I'm gonna put them onto this backer board, which is where the LEDs are going to mount to. So I guess we're just gonna do take two now. The second attempt was successful. Oh my gosh. Oh, this is so scary. The first step in building the picture frame was to drill 10 holes for the 10 eyeballs that are featured in the picture. And yes, we agree that there is too much eyeball poking going on with this project. 
Once the holes were cut, I poked the LEDs into them and measured out the wire that was needed. After that, we're in Solder City, baby! We out here making electrical connections like it's nobody's business. After each solder connection is made, I use heat shrink tubing to encase everything and everything's nice and cool. After that, it's just wash, rinse, repeat, solder, heat shrink, keep on going for the whole thing and then everybody has scary eyes. After all the soldering is done, I use the bane of my existence, hot glue, to secure all the wires and make sure they're not going to go anywhere. And I can assure you, they did not go anywhere. Something broke later and I had to break the glue. It was not fun. Out in the wood shop, strips of wood are glued together to form a control panel for the picture frame as well as a hiding place for the Arduino. You can see that control panel on the left of this image. The large section on the right is just to make the picture frame look good. It doesn't actually do anything. Everything is then secured with clamps for safety. Picture frame is then painted kind of sort of brown. It's close enough to the other picture frame colors in the room that we're hoping you'll think this is a regular picture frame until the creepy LEDs come on and shatter your feelings of safety. We use spray adhesive to attach the final photo onto the backer board with the LEDs and now everybody has scary eyes forever. You're welcome. Now it's time for everything to be affixed to its final positions, making the most inedible sandwich you've ever seen in your life. We stack the glass, the matting, and then the actual photo with the wiring, and everything is screwed down so it won't go anywhere ever. Finally, it's time to mount the electronics. There's an LCD screen, an Arduino, a speaker, and a reset button. Wow, what a party. Then everything has to be plugged into the correct pin on the Arduino. Can I get a janitor on aisle 7 because this is a mess? Back out in the wood shop, construction of the parcel box begins with the cutting of a 3 quarter inch piece of scrap. This is going to be the base for the box. The structure of the box is built from 2x4s that have been cut down to not look like 2x4s. Pocket holes are drilled into the 2x4 cross members for later assembly. More 2x4s are cut up into 1.5 by 1.5 by 42 inch strips that will form the corners of the parcel box. The corner pieces are going to hold shiplap boards so channels are routed in them to hold those boards. This job generated a very large amount of sawdust. With all the structural pieces complete, it was time to begin construction. Gluing and screwing things together will make them strong. Then it was time to cut the horizontal boards. These boards are only $5 for 8 foot lengths and they lock together. It's a really good deal. And they didn't generate that much sawdust. The back is just a piece of plywood, but you'll hear more about this later because there was a problem. With all the structural and shiplap pieces cut to shape, it was time to assemble. Assembly was complete, so it was time to paint it. This is just white enameled since it's going to be outside. We're hoping to make this boring enough that the Homeowners Association will ignore us. The next day... This thing needed a sturdy lid, so we glued and pocket screwed together two boards of premium pine, which are pretty strong if I do have to say so myself. And would you look at that? The hat fits. Now we need to put on a handle and we're making it out of wood because we're lazy and also it works out pretty well if we make it out of wood. Well would you look at that, we're gluing and screwing another thing together. It's almost like this strategy works almost all the time. We use clamps to make sure that the board didn't move when we screwed it together but you know, it's together and now we have a lid that works. The parcel concealment shelf needed some support, so we offered some emotional and physical support with these two boards that we glued and pocket screwed to the bottom of the lid. Look at that, us being efficient. The lid's hinges are then screwed into the back of the box because we wanted to hide them. Okay, so we're working here in the shop and Hannah was putting the screws in to hold the lid on and this whole thing fell over and broke out the back. So she's in the back taking the back off. So just to show you she's okay, yeah, I was in the box. Uh, fun fact, it broke because my body hit the side of 
the back. The, now we have to fix the back because I ran into it. So, gonna be a little delay, but we'll we'll we'll, we'll work through it. You okay? I get some water. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Post water break. Here I am putting the hinges onto the underside of the lid. Everything's cool. Everything's fine. I'm fine. Everything works. I knocked out the back, and then we fixed it. My part of this task was to hold the lid down while Hannah put the screws on underneath. How am I doing? You mean to tell me you can open this thing with hinges this entire time? Oh my gosh, it's so wild. It's so crazy. I can't believe it. A door on the side opens to allow you to get your packages out of this box, and it's held shut with a hasp that we can put a lock on. The whole point of this project is for us to be alerted when packages have been delivered, so we're going to put in the sensor right now. The parcel concealment shelf is held up by metal rods. Here they are, making their debut. The parcel concealment shelf is pocket screwed to the back of the whole box, so that way it does what it's supposed to do. The metal supports are attached to the emotional support rods that we attached earlier, and now everything is working together like a team. Are you ready for a magic trick? Because this whole thing can open and then deposit your packages and then, oh my gosh, Chuck is gone. Oh no! We live in a brick house and the picture frame has a sensor wire that has to pass through that wall to get outside. So we drill the hole in our brick wall. Then we pass the wire through. This is the wire that will detect when the parcel box is open and closed. And Hannah was the only one small enough to fit inside the box to wire the sensor. The last step was attaching the sign that tells people where to put packages. So now they will know, and then we will know, and then you will know, except that you won't, only we will know. It's all done. Let's watch it work. <laughs> You've heard of the Power Rangers. This is what they look like now. Feel old yet? So that's the porch package box and our creepy LED indicator. Uh, it's all working now. It's all in, in place. This is actually live. We need to reset it so it can receive packages. We're waiting for our first actual delivery to be made to see if the driver actually knows how to lift the front of the box or not. So we'll see. We'll see what happens. We live in suburbia and there's a guy across the street cutting the yard, so sorry, but thanks to our patrons for helping us to finance things like this. Uh, we love you and we really appreciate it because uh, this is one of the things that you actually did paid for completely. So uh, thank you much. If you want to be a patron, uh, join us. There's always extra content and we put out every month a video on what we're building the next month, so you'll see what's coming up. We build stuff like this all the time. If you like what you see, Please consider subscribing, maybe liking the video, you could comment. If you don't want to miss an upload from us, ring the bell. Please. We'll see you next time. Good night. <laughs>